Hello there everyone and welcome back to Napoleon Total War with the Great War mod. We're gonna start off here by having me kind of refamiliarize myself with what's going on. It's actually been quite a while since I recorded some things. We'll start down in Constantinople. Now I do remember that I was building an army here and yes we are. It's gonna take quite a while though to get a full-size army. The idea was to move in and take Moldova region from them either through... I think we set it up so we could actually pass through Romanian territory because we are allies and we do have military access which is indefinite so that's good so I could march there but might be quicker to uh, sail through there All right, because I did recruit a ship so rather than to march which would take quite a few turns and kind of speed through that by landing our troops here next to Odessa and then uh, move along this line to get to Moldova. Although he might just send, you know, gain us like one turn or something like that. I guess the best thing would be to kind of go ashore here because our allies could be blocking these. Uh, these uh, bridges and not allow us to pass. So if I land here and I have to walk all the way up here to try and get down or most likely all the way there to get around, that's not good. Same with here, having to force to march all the way there to get through. So it might be better here. Obviously the best thing to be would be to send a scout aircraft to actually see what's going on there. Currently we cannot have an idea what's going on over, all over here, so this scout aircraft should be able to make it over there. I do, no, you know what, I have an aircraft over here that I can send that way, and that would only take me about two turns. So that's better than to send the one over by uh, the Austrian capital. So this area is contested. Looks like the Germans got pretty good control of it. But the Russians keep attacking, as we can see here, and there are more forces on the way. Um, our forces, which um, s established Yugoslavia, uh, are going to move to deal with the Austrians once they recapture Vienna once more. I'm hoping that's what's going to happen anyways. And then I can go in and take it. Le Currently the Austrians only have Prague and Klausenberg left in Transylvania. So they do not have a lot. They do have armies, but again, they're not really moving them. Uh, so it should be easy for me to go in, get this once the Italians lose the city once more due to a revolt. Unfortunately for me, as we go even further north, um, it doesn't look as though the French are going to lose Berlin. Why did I say it like that? Berlin to um, a revolt. They're uh, quite happy, in fact. They've gone complete control. Not entirely sure how they managed to crush the resistance that quickly in a capital, especially since. Since it's a capital, you know, these guys have 35 miners for occupation. These guys got 9. I can't remember. And they're, I mean, when you take a capital, it's inevitable that you get attacked by the local populace. It's inevitable. Somehow the French managed to get around that. And, uh, I mean, the Germans got tons of troops ready for a counterattack, but they're not doing anything, so... Um, oh yes, here we go, uh, gaining another of my victory conditioned regions. We lost 71 men and 1300 enemies fell. Very good, field guns and foot guards in the top. So we just took that, that's wonderful. Opens up this port for us. We're going to be sending over a service battalion to uh, take control, make sure that that stays under our control. 
Uh, I don't want the Germans to burn it, so I'm actually already going to send out the cavalry. Just so that if they attack, they'll just block it. So at this point, Germany has no ports into the Baltics, which is going to lose them quite a bit of trade. Currently, they're only trading with the Austro-Hungarians. So the only trade that for Germany that's going on is between Prague, which is the current capital of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and Dresden. So that's the only trade. And there's not even a proper road going in between these areas. Not entirely sure why, but there isn't. You would think that maybe there would be a road connecting through the forest, but no. Um, and the German capital, of course, Warsaw. So what we've got set up is Allenby, of course, is going to attack Moltke at the bridge. Why have I recruited here? I've re Ah, yes, I was moving forward with the infantry that I'd set up. Um, not really super necessary to have them all concentrated like that. I could spread them out just to have a little bit of troops anywhere, everywhere. Um, but maybe it's better actually to have them concentrated because that means that uh, if someone attacks, then we have a higher chance. Uh, if I split the force, it's a high risk of them uh, being able to defeat us in detail. Right. So we got the planes. We got a fighter plane and another scout plane ready to go in. Um, oh yeah, the navy is making its way back. We're also building quite a few ships. The biggest ships we can are being built in the ports right now and we're gathering a fleet. A gathering storm of steel is going to make its way into the Baltic. Not that it's necessary now because, well, the uh, enemy's trade is broken down. As far as I've seen, I think... If I remember the last video, the uh, Russians actually defeated the Soviet uprising around Petrograd. So, looks like there's not going to be a Russian Revolution. Which is not super surprising because they've done pretty well in the war. But at the same time, they have been pushed back. So it's kind of... And the thing is, even if the Russians were successful... Still, just the amount of people dying and so on would probably have led to problems anyways. Like, it wasn't just the war that set off the revolution. It was the entire system was just uh, broken from the start. And then just throwing a war at that system uh, just made it so much worse. With that said, I think I've set it up. So, I've done everything, so what we're going to do now is take Allenby and his troops, attack Moltke at the bridge, they've dug in as well, got machine guns, not much artillery, plenty of troops, and cavalry, um, but I don't think they will stay, stay in the chance against us just because of the massive artillery we've got arrayed against them, so it doesn't really help them that much because they really they kind of have to cross to get to me rather than the other way around but I'm going to cross to make it difficult for myself and we'll see how that goes right there's nothing more to say let's have Allenby charge across and claim victory against Helmut von Molke Here's the setup before the fight. I have sent my Canadians across. They've got barbed wire defense in front of them. There's a machine gun right there. We will be focusing on that as soon as possible. Destroy that. And get across. There's a cavalry unit, the 14th Dragoons, but they shouldn't be a problem. What I'm going to do is the West Indies and the 1st African Rifles. It's going to move up on either side of the crossing point and take control of that to support the Canadians across the, um, the uh, side of the river. And then we've got the Indian infantry. They're going to charge across to be actual support for the Canadians, as I don't think they will be hold too long. Once that is established, the cavalry can ride through 
And uh, there's a lot of impossible terrain here, but I'm hoping they can get around into town and get around. Over on this side, I've placed the um, sappers. I'm thinking we're going to place the sappers up front as close as possible with bombs, and then they're going to retreat as soon as possible. And I'm hoping we can drag the enemy onto that. We've got the two uh, regular infantry that will be moved up. I'll set on the other side of the bridge. And then we can see about crossing there at some point. And yes, that's about it. First things first. These guys need to move back. These guys need to storm forward. African rifles need to go forward. The uh, West Indies need to go forward, and the Indians need to go forward. So right off the start, the Canadians are opening up good fire on the machine gun. Aid is needed though, so artillery needs to come in and focus on that. At the same time, my uh, sappers got entirely destroyed by the Germans. But as the Germans are pushing forward, they'll hopefully move into those bombs and it will kind of pay off in that way. Heavy losses for the Canadians. Actually not that bad. 50 men is not that bad. Uh, we're going to move this one into town though. The other two will move forward to block the enemy. As the Germans aren't really pushing, I will... Mm, the... The African Rifles will stay just in case there's a push by the enemy here. Otherwise, I'll have tons of troops kind of stuck on the side. I'm gonna tell the sappers to actually leave. There's a risk here. Now, these guys are hidden. These guys are not probably should move a little bit forward to actually hide. Oh, the enemy is uh, kind of consolidating towards the center. That machine gun needs to die before we uh, try and cross. Okay, so the enemy is actually leaving. Uh, leaving me uh, entirely to take control of the two crossing points. Which I like. So we're gonna see about getting all these guys into line. And with them now across, the African rifles will cross. It's a bit risky here, but I'm gonna send these guys through. Now I'm contemplating, actually, because there's a town in trouble here actually sending the cavalry over through this side instead. The troops at this point, having run quite a while to get into these positions, are uh, quite tired. The Indian troops opening fire on the Germans that are slowly advancing into this fire, getting torn up. At the same time, Machine guns are basically destroyed, uh, leaving my troops uh, easy passage as they move through. So it looks like the sapper thing was complete failure. The enemy did not try to uh, go ahead and establish control, complete control of their side of the river. We've got the um, Canadians moving forward. The Canadians will be moving to take this forest right here. They say grenadiers, but they can't throw grenades. And it's pissing me off a little bit that they can't throw grenades. Because that makes them a less useful unit. Right, set up. As soon as possible here. Oh, I didn't tell the cavalry to run. Well, that's great. Now they'll run. Canadians, hurry forward. 
The enemy isn't really shooting at us, are they? But now they are. Now some units are stopping to ch shoot at us. I'm gonna move everyone forward to get a little bit of a better position. African rifles. Stay as reserve behind the line. Cavalry is being targeted. Oh, the cavalry did make a charge towards the infantry that is crossing. And they went onto the bomb. Got destroyed. Wonderful. The so risk here of me uh, ax might, might by accident destroy my own units. Let's try to avoid that second bomb unit. Cavalry is now ready, hopefully, to aid the troops on this side, which should be good. Germans are pushing a bit of fire back at us, but it's a bit too late, and it's not in the volume that would be needed. Canadians should push forward through the woods. And now the two infantry units are in good position here. Let's try to avoid kind of this area. So I'm gonna move this unit up there and then you th to there and then the cavalry should be able to cross. Canadians gaining the high ground ready to pummel the enemy's uh, field guns. We should actually push them even further forward. Let's be a little bit cheeky and send our troops forward into a charge. At the same time, I want Barrage to fall upon the troops in the middle. And also on units of cavalry. So we've got first marines, the German army, laying down fire on the troops that have crossed. They're holding their own, and the cavalry is now able to cross. The Germans gonna get broken up here. I'm gonna send forward the 5th Indians and the 2nd. And then these additional, these uh, three units will be moving forward. Tell them to hold fire though, as I wish not to have them shoot our own men in the back. Cavalry has crossed. We'll set them up up here. So slowly now, the German force is getting surrounded. Just bayonet and charged and forced away the 83rd Regiment. And now we'll sandwich. It's an Indian sandwich. It's a naan bread. As the uh, 26th Infantry got destroyed. We're going to push forward to the for the 81st. Uh, first. Or no, that's that's just how many men are left in the regiment. Seems like this might be the first regiment because it's just called the regiment. Let's focus the artillery instead over here. You can go in and actually bayonet charge that. Two Indian units charge in. Quite quickly, this unit is overwhelmed. It's taking a little bit longer than expected for him to break. Pushing forward to the 75th. And with that, the entire German army falls apart. Right, let's try not to shoot down the brave men who decided to or decided to, or was ordered to, charge in. I've completely surrounded the German army, as we can see here. And we're slowly tearing them all apart. Tell the artillery to hold fire. Putting in crossfire on a few troops that were left here. So you would think it would be hard to cross fight on a river crossing like this with um, machine guns stationed on the other side but it wasn't it was actually quite easy let's go ahead and move these troops forward a little bit 
similar over here. Well, we're shooting each other. Right, we're done here. There's uh, no, no one's going to be left of the German army here anyways. And there we have the results of the battle. We lost about half of our force, in fact. We lost a thousand men. Um, I think a lot of that, I mean, I mean, yeah, we took a lot of losses early on. The sapper units were whittled down. 90% of those units were killed. Canadians lost a lot initially. Well, not really. It was one unit that lost half manpower, and the other ones lost about 10% each. Um, then, of course, the Indians lost quite a few men that were being uh, shot at. And then just through prolonged fighting. And it seems that we killed about 270 to... No, 300 of our own, actually. So about 30% of all our casualties were inflicted by ourselves. Indians were the ones that killed the most. I'm pretty sure this is one of the units that charged. Managed to get 403 kills. Compared to the second, which is infantry. Managed to get 300. That's over on the right side, crossing at the bridge. Uh, sappers, one unit that the cavalry rode onto, actually got some kills. This one got none, while losing 88 men. So not a great, um, not really great stats there. A thousand men is kind of a lot. Uh, now we do have great replenishment, so I guess we'll have to move forward. There's no way I'm going to move forward with a thousand men towards uh, quite arguably bigger strongholds. Josiah Herring is holding that area. That's Josiah Herring. That was the guy I sent to Finland in my campaign. Um, so Allenby is going to have to be refitted. He's no longer in a position to fight. We're going to have um, instead Haig continue his fight. Now I could move down here, but the French got this kind of locked down, and according to the victory regions, I need to get Western Prussia. So instead, let's see Haig on a, a march through Pomerania all the way to Western Prussia, taking that. And in that closing in to kind of sandwich Königsberg between us and the Russians. Also, at some point, I imagine the Russians should be able to uh, actually be victorious in their siege of Warsaw. Currently, they're just slowly uh, sieging it out. Three turns until uh, that falls. Good. With that said, there's no more moves to make. Let's end turn and see what our enemies come up with in response. Now, um, as we've seen before, they haven't been very responsive. You can see all their armies are dug in. I'm hoping that changes. I mean, as much as I like the fact that my allies have, at times, actually been... Well, certain allies have been very aggressive, like we say, the Italians. Um... The French in some part, they're taking Berlin. The Russians, really it's the Russians and the Italians have been really aggressive and moving around. I probably wished that it, you know, it would be the Germans and the Austrians that would be, uh, so it would be a little bit more challenging for me. Or if, I wouldn't mind so much the Italians going forward, but... It, it would be an interesting um, sort of um, uh, it would be an interesting sort of uh, line of occurrences if the Russians were able to take a lot initially and you know as they as they've done here they moved in to Hungary they took uh, Morovia they also moved in early on took Prussia uh, took all of Prussia both e east and west and then Lemberg as well. But then they would collapse due to revolution. So it would kind of be, you know, victory and then defeat. And then I'd come in and fill the gap. 
Um, as it take, it took me quite a while to actually just gather up troops and then ship them across. Um, starting, of course, with taking out the Ottomans and so on, moving around in uh, those circles. Anyways, let's go ahead and end turn and see what the enemy comes up with. Even though I have no great expectation f for them to uh, make any kind of aggressive moves. Probably the best one would be them to, for, to retake Berlin. Just so I can take it. If nothing else. Aircraft detected. It's my own. Path blocked for Edward Boyle. My eyes. Uh, he's a pilot. He's going to be moving through here. The French are blocking the bridge there for some reason. Bastards. There's no point. It's not like the Germans are going to march through there. Such a high con. What is this kind of... We've got Belgians, we've got Italians. I don't know what the Italians are doing here. Tons of French troops. Uh, we got troops recruited. This one... It's going to move up with the... To take position with the cavalry. Uh, no one really moving here. So, Haig, as we originally discussed, is going to move along the coast. I might send the cavalry forward just to kind of scout ahead. Can I just. Oh, they actually have quite the troops there. That could be an interesting fight. Possibly. Maybe I should reduce the amount of artillery I have to make it more of an interesting fight. Um, population a little bit unhappy. We can have another two service battalions to hold that down. Uh, the remnants of Moltke is moving to this region, which I don't like. So, uh, I mean, they're all broken down. I'm going to move forward the two most experienced units. And that's going to cut him down once he gets through there. Uh, I could move into the French region, but I think the replenishment is better in my own region. We even have a supply depot. I was going to build one here, but it took so long to get that done. I'm not sure why we're not getting better resupply here. I would like the like a full green one. Yes, my Let's move our aircraft, take Under a look a little bit what the Germans have done, Another which is nothing. I await your command. Maybe I kick them into action by bombing them. 20% chance. It's not great, but it's something. Oh, you think I'm loco? For some reason, we all got just Spanish mercenaries in our armies. Uh, where do I need to check? There's nothing I need to check here. The Italian army moved out. They actually moved down to destroy the little tiny army that was here. And now I'm not entirely sure where the, Itali the Italian, the Italian army went. Uh, we're seeing something here. Why is it red there? Because we don't have access to move into Italian lands. Great. The thing though is the border with the Hungarian plains goes right here. So I can move that close. By still not needing to um, actually cross into Italian space. Wonderful. Um, do, 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 do. Did I, I was able to recruit a single unit here. Uh, how about some tanks? I think the female ones are better. Machine gun fire just to tear our enemies down. Did my air... Yeah, my aircraft's right there. The Germans managed to secure that. Whatever army was moving forward here got shot down. Gonna move through. See what the Germans have here. They have got a full stack. But both the bridges are clear. It's going to take quite a while before I'm close to ready to sending in an army. We're not counting the service battalions. They are needed to just hold down the place. And 
and not to forget to move the navy. They will move on their own. Don't forget it because I've set them to move. So now they're uh, actually moving pretty well. Let's see. I wasn't building anything there. But here I'm building three. So the first one, Elizabeth class, is going to be ready in two turns. I'm going to build another two. Well, those are the Colossus, because I no longer have the ability to build any more Elizabeth class ones. So cap on that. Is there anything else I need to move? No. No, I don't see that. Bomber plane. No point in moving that around. And these planes are on their way. Anything in terms of technology can I possibly trade. Now, I haven't been able to gather anything. The um, French got quite a lot of technology. Let's see if I... The Russians got even more. Now they do have... Uh, they have deposed the Tsar. So we've got... Another government there. Um... I wonder if the uh, Germans going to fall apart. I'm surprised the Austrian Empire hasn't fallen apart, given they only have two regions like that. And then, I mean, the Italians really made a good gain with all they have taken. Hopefully, though, that's going to lose quite a bit of that. Um, in terms of... I mean, once I take the Moldovan region, I might be able to actually start trading with the Romanians. Possibly. Who knows? Maybe not. Um, there's no more moves to make. I kind of want to spy on this region, but it doesn't look like anything's ha happening there. It looks like more things is actually going on here. Oh, those troops are not moving actually to uh, attack Königsberg. They're just moving to close in on Warsaw instead. It would be a sizable force to go that way though. Uh, da, 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 da. Anything else? No! Let's then go ahead once more and end turn. So we did have a small German counterattack up in Königsberg and then we also had an attack on our own city and castle. Uh, Spanish crisis of 1917, seeing no benefit of getting involved, the King of Spain made an important decision to remain neutral in the Great War. Initially this move provided the Spanish with a number of advantages including a major increase in war export to blah 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 blah, uh, push harder to meet the growing demands, do, 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 grew tired of their poor working conditions, the February Revolution in Russia and subsequent growth of socialist movement in, across Europe, uh, censorship and impressment as you, uh, German U-boat attacks. Da, 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 da. Election would be first Spain in history to see a truly unified government elected rather than named solely by the king. The dominance of the junta and the conservative government was undisputed in spite of the rising tension through blah blah blah. Yeah, it's not going well for the Spanish, and soon enough we'll have uh, a little bit of a flu turning up as well. Um, good, good. More troops. More interestingly, is the ones in Amalia. Probably actually need another tank. That would be great to have loads of tank coming in against the Germans. Any other interesting troops I've recently unlocked? Trench gun. I guess we can have a trench gun just for funsies. Did I recruit any of those? Yeah, we do have got grenade launcher fellows. I guess just some regular infantry uh, to bulk out the force would be nice as well. So we're building, a, coming along pretty nicely there. Might have a small Russian attack going on. Nothing really substantial going on in this region. In terms of here, we've got a little small German counterattack, which kind of broke up some of the smaller reinforcements that were sent down 
towards Warsaw, but as we can see... Oh! They've broken up the siege. What? Was there a fight? Doesn't look like there was a fight. Looks like the Russians just pulled off for some reason. When they were clearly winning. So I don't see why they did that. And I certainly don't like it. Haig's moving through and he's now laying siege. Leopold, Prince of Bavaria. They've got quite a bit of artillery here. And they do have some of the new infantry as well, but most of it is old. Machine gun, mortar, mortar is bloody useless, I'd say. It's a small reinforcement here, but they'll most likely not make it in time. We managed to recruit some extra troops here. The French moving some troops back. I'm hoping they move some forward. They uh, might actually have some uh, some casualties inflicted on themselves. I mean, if the Germans would actually kick into gear, they've got plenty of troops to start a counterattack, but then just not doing it. Um, Allenby will be moving to deal with these bastards. It's a single mortar. Uh, oof. We managed to lose 800 men through that. While well, they only lost 24. Oh, a, a lot of it might have been dealt onto the um, whatever these units are called. The militia units. If we look at the lost... Yeah, the home guard stood for a lot of those losses. But still, 800 men for a single mortar unit. That sets me back quite a bit in terms of uh, uh, the replenishment here. Not very nice, not very nice at all. Sometimes these guys are trying to bypass this force. So I'm just going to move out and go ahead and attack them. There's 11 men. That's a little bit better. They were only uh, We only lost one guy in that. We're going to be moving back to Hanover proper. Soon enough, my navy will be out. Moving. Inching towards the capital. Very good. Serbians have actually sent out a little bit of a force to protect the bridge here. Not that it is needed. I don't think the Russians are going to invade them. Good, good, good. Continuing to building on this. Very nice. We're making tons of money per turn. 9,000 per turn now. So that's very nice indeed. Not forget to move the navy. So the navy is uh, one, two, three turns away from gathering in the channel. And then uh, we have another four turns ish to have some of the uh, Elizabeth class ships ready to be deployed if we wait for the longest wait to get all the Elizabeth ships out in six turns and then to move on the German Navy and crash through and uh, I mean not that the I think the Germans are raiding a little bit of the Russian trade but it's not like it's a major hurdle for the Russians at this point. Now, I think we're actually going to end it here and we'll start up next turn or next video with this fight there. And we might also get the uh, attack on Vienna into that as well. Yeah, I think we'll end it there. If, if, I mean, it, all, all I really want is just for the Germans to kind of kick into gear and start counterattacking. Because uh, when they're passive like this, it's uh, even easier to destroy them. Especially since our uh, allies are being so aggressive, especially the Russians. Um, the Russians have been super aggressive. They have lost territory though, so the Germans have counterattacked at some point against them. Italians. I mean, the Italians. 
What are you gonna say about the Italians? The Italians just ransacked through everything. In the amount of territory. I never, never thought that Stuttgart, that the Baden-Württemberg region would be taken by the Italians of all people. And, I mean, the French didn't take anything. I had to give them Strasbourg. Well, they took Berlin, but that was like such a odd move that no one could really foresee that, really. But, yeah. Anyways, then, we'll end it right here. So, I'll say, as I'll always say, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.